Everyone, meet this cute goblin shadow priest who goes by Demi. Demi was just like you, super excited for Dragonflight at the prospect of climbing in solo shuffle. Finally, this time when all your partners inevitably quit, you can still rank up and be competitive. Just like you, she stepped in shuffle, confident in how fast she'll climb with no one holding her back, only to find herself stuck at 2k rating. Don't worry, there's good news for her and you. As a close friend of ours, we gave Demi a single 30 minute coaching session. And with that single session, she went from 2K to 2.4K rating in less than a week. And we're gonna be sharing everything we taught her in this guide. You'll soon learn the most important lesson you need for solo shuffle and how some very popular advice you're hearing may actually be holding you back from climbing. Let's get into it. There's two major issues that many players are facing going into solo shuffle. We're fairly certain that many of you follow other WoW content creators, so you probably heard this following advice to solo shuffle already. Just send it, bro, or damage is all that matters in solo shuffle. This is honestly great advice if you understand how to use it. The idea is that solo shuffle is silly, chaotic, and you should never hope for much coordination. So just press your major CDs and get the ball rolling with damage. Problem is, you still being at 1800 are doing this wrong, because you're missing one piece of the puzzle. To highlight why, let's take a look at this game from Demi. The game begins with the enemy warlock and rogue opening on her team. Now you don't need to know anything about Shadow Priest. Take a look at Demi's decision here. It's every caster's dream to be able to free cast an arena, so Demi moves forward out of line of sight to hit the druid that's isolated. She slams every damage cooldown in the book, and look at the result. She got Barkskin, chunked the druid blow regardless, and even got Tranquility out of it. That's two major defensive cooldowns, plus she's got the ball rolling on damage already. That's an amazing start to the match, right? Wrong! If you thought that was good or fine, then you're about to learn why solo shuffle feels so hard for you, but looks so easy when you watch other people play it. The reason why pros tell you the just send it advice is because they themselves instinctively know something critical, but they're forgetting to say it. All damage isn't created equally. When people hear just send it, they think that means maximizing scoreboard damage, hitting as many players as possible at all times. While this can put a strain on healers in deep dampening, this doesn't really accomplish much in the early game, since most healers have efficient AoE healing tools. Most of Radiance and Atonement healing from Priests, Efflorescence from Druids, or Avenging Crusader healing from Paladins. All of these effects will just instantly heal any pad damage you deal, essentially for free. So this is very important to keep in mind. You could have way more damage if you're spreading and hitting multiple targets. However, the value of that damage is significantly lower. Here's a simple way of thinking about it. 200,000 damage on one target typically has more value than 300,000 damage spread evenly amongst multiple players, especially in the early stages of the game before dampening is stacked up. So after every loss, you can't just look at your details and say, what the hell? I did the most damage, how did we lose? You see, it's not actually a clear representation of meaningful damage. Who cares if you top the meters if 20% of your damage is done to a demo warlock's imps? That damage is basically wasted. The same goes for defensive cooldowns, with similar logic. Most classes have two to three major defensive CDs, and your goal should be to force all the defensives out of a single player, most of the time in solo shuffle. That way, they eventually run out and your next go is likely to kill them. But spreading damage and doing goes on different targets can get you one or two defensives out of most players, but you're not making any of them run out of all their options. All this means is that it's taking longer to achieve your actual goal, to kill a single target. So looking back at this game from Demi, here's why hitting this druid is so bad. Her partner is a hunter. The entire goal of a shadow priest and a hunter together is to set up goes with their CC on a healer. So getting the druid's defensives does literally nothing. Your goal in solo shuffle is actually really simple. You just want to coordinate damage with your teammate to deal meaningful damage to your main kill target. We know, we know your teammates are focusing on the most random things. Why would you ever want to coordinate with them? We'll get to that. Let's first think about how differently this game would have gone if Demi had done this. She CCs the Druid here and hits the Rogue instead. This likely forces either Cloak, Evasion, or Vanish from the Rogue who's overextending. Likely two to three of those. Then, do you see how later on into the game Demi and her Hunter set up a go on the Rogue? Imagine if he didn't have Vanish here, because you already forced it. A little later on, another go. Imagine if he didn't have Cloak for this one. Think about how many missed kill opportunities there have been, just because Demi didn't know this one concept and screwed up her initial cooldowns on pointless defensives and damage padding. Instead, this game drags on, and Demi with her team are gasping for air the entire time. It took them so long to eventually score a kill at the final moments before death. This should not be how hard your games are at 2k rating. If you had put a capable Shadow Priest here who knew about meaningful damage, this game ends in under a minute probably. So we sat down with Demi and coached her through this round of solo shuffle. We made it clear 
that the decisions she was making were just to damage pad and not really about setting up game winning plays. In fact, she was so oblivious to what her teammates were doing every round that while she was randomly hitting this druid, her rogue out of nowhere one shot the enemy hunter. Can you imagine a single expansion where rogues aren't top tier? Neither can I. Anyway, that's definitely not a deserved win, and she likely would have gone 3-3 three three this shuffle, which is not how you climb. So after our coaching, Demi queued up once again, and there will be some major differences in this next shuffle. For starters, the previous lobby we looked at was literally Disneyland for a Shadow Priest. SP does very well into a ton of these classes, and it should have been the easiest 6-0 ever. But Demi now finds herself in a lobby with a Warrior, a Warlock, and every caster knows how annoying it can be to fight Resto Shamans too. This is going to be hell for a Shadow Priest. Not only that, but do you see how Demi's UI is different? We changed it so it'll be better in the long run. What we're getting at is that Demi was having the time of her life in the previous lobby versus classes SP is good against while being comfortable in her UI. But now she's going to be adjusting to a new setup, meaning that her skill level is even lower than before, and that's on top of a terrible lobby for SP. However, this time she has one goal in mind, coordinate damage on whoever your teammate is hitting. Let's watch how that first game plays out. Now, most players just call targets at the start of the arena, but Demi did something a bit odd, yet surprisingly smart we didn't even think about. Do you notice how she put her own teammate as her focus target? This is a pretty neat hack for inexperienced players who can't follow everything going on. You all know just how ridiculous it can get in an arena, so Demi just decided to keep tabs on her teammate at the start of the game to see what they're up to. The match begins, and what you're about to watch will be very relatable, we imagine. Demi immediately gets engaged on, kicked, and then stunned. Now there's a billion massive nameplates popping up on her screen. Disoriented out of her mind, Demi targets the shaman for some unknown reason, and yep, there's the UI error to top it all off. Not really sure what the hell is going on, Demi has already used her Fade, Desperate Prayer, and Dispersion instantly. If you don't know, that's almost every single one of SP's defensives. She's done less damage than the enemy healer and is completely out of tools to save herself. This is a player just like you having a terrible time just like you do. Let's watch how she salvages the situation. With her partner still being her focus target, Demi notices that they're hitting the enemy monk. Now she begins to get some damage rolling. She remembers the send it advice and pops all her damage CDs to get some pressure rolling. Finally, after 30 seconds in the arena, Demi remembers, oh yeah, I'm a Shadow Priest, I have amazing instant CC. She switches her focus to the Shaman and locks him down. Then with her coordinated pressure, they instantly win the game off it. Think about that, she didn't use her crowd control for an entire 30 seconds of the match, which completely goes against the send it mentality, but using it in a coordinated effort had immediate impact, unlike the previous shuffle we watched. Now, many of you may counter, yeah, they won, but only because the enemy team messed up and reacted terribly. Yeah, exactly. Guys, you're not versus Snuts, Waz, Peekaboo, or Swifty. You're versus Timmy, Jimmy, Sammy, and Betty. Of course, they won't react properly. And coordinated damage has the benefit of spiking your opponent's health bars way more than random spread pressure. Spiking health bars means a lot more room for error, and it makes it way more likely your opponents do mess up and lose for free. Now we get to the part of the guide where we address the concerns that go along with this. No, you won't just instantly win every single game with coordinated damage. Of course not. Some games will still be tough, and you can still lose. Demi lost the second round of the shuffle because both she and her teammates played terribly. There's also the issue that we mentioned earlier on. What if your teammate is hitting the wrong target? Isn't it troll to hit a terrible target just for the sake of coordinated damage? No, guys, you're not going to lose at these ratings because you're hitting a suboptimal target. To climb the lower rated brackets, you have to think about WoW like players from other games think about their own solo queue modes. In a game like League, for example, you don't rely on your teammates to play properly. They're going to mess up and give kills for free. But a good player can win in spite of that, because the enemy team is making just as many mistakes as their own teammates are. Carrying in solo queue games is about learning the fundamentals, aka coordinated damage, and punishing the lower rated mistakes the enemy team makes. And this next round is going to highlight that very well. Demi is paired with a Warlock versus the enemy melee cleave this time around. What's interesting is that Demi's healer runs right up to them to get trained. So we've got this situation on screen. As a caster, who is the one target you don't hit here and why? The enemy Evoker, of course. These two melee are out in the open versus two completely free casting damage dealers. Not only that, but the enemy healer is right by their pillar. Hitting them makes zero sense. But notice what Demi does. During this initial chaos, she takes a moment to target her own teammate to see what they're up to. For some reason, they seem to want to target the Evoker. So she just commits and sends it without any hesitation on the wrong target. Remember what we said? Your versus Jimmy. The Evoker decides it's a good idea to run into the middle of the action as well, and now they're really in trouble from Demi's coordinated burst. This forces the Evoker to heavily retreat, leaving his DPS isolated. Demi notices her Warlock has already switched targets to the Monk. She swaps as well, and they've instantly won yet again. 
Guys, just remember, you will not lose because you're hitting a suboptimal target at 2k rating. You're losing more often than not because you're not following the core fundamentals of WoW Arena. And this is without a doubt the most important fundamental for Solo Shuffle, and it will instantly make you a much better player. Following our guidelines, Demi crushed this shuffle match, carrying nearly every single round in a much tougher lobby than the first one we watched. With this lesson in mind for the rest of the week, and a billion UI tweaks later, Demi skyrocketed to her goal of 2.4k rating. Trust us, if you're not already doing this, incorporating this fundamental into your gameplay will give you massive results instantly. Alright guys, that's a wrap on this one. We might come back at a later date to push Demi even further up the shuffle ladder. But for now, thanks for watching, and catch you next time.